Hi, everyone. Welcome to Ego's Edu Concepts, a platform that provides you with quality education in science and mathematics, starting from secondary level all the way up to A level. If you are visiting this channel for the first time, please subs subscribe and keep on sharing so that you can help yourself and somebody better themselves in science and mathematics education. In this video, we are looking at IGCSE chemistry, and the topic is valency. By the end of this video, you should be able to define valency. Thereafter, you will be able to determine the valence of elements on the periodic table. And finally, you'll be able to determine the valency of radicals. Without further ado, let's go straight into the subject. To begin with, let's just give a recap of what the periodic table is. So by now, we know that the periodic table is simply a rectangular arrangement of elements according to their atomic numbers. Now, the periodic table, as I like to call it, is uh, a very important tool for chemistry. If you want to pass chemistry, there is need for you to understand this important tool called the periodic table. Now, there will be other lessons that will explain in details what the periodic table is all about. But because we are looking at valence in this lesson, I'm going straight just to mention what a group is, because a group is related to the valency of an element. So a group is simply a vertical column. OK, a group is a vertical column of elements on the periodic table. So these group numbers are shown actually using the Roman numerals, okay? So as you can see, this is Roman numeral number one, which is representing this vertical column of elements. So meaning the entire column here is group one. This one is group two. Then there is this one here. This one is just called the transition elements. Soon you understand why. Then we go to group three. So meaning everything in here is group three. We go to group four, we go to group five, we go to group six, we go to group seven, then we have group eight, which they write as group O for a reason that you will be able to understand by the end of this video. All right, then, what is valency? We are saying valency is simply the number of electrons an element needs to achieve an octet configuration. In other words, to achieve stability. Now, an octet configuration is a situation where the outermost shell of an element has eight electrons. That's what octet means. It simply means it has a total number of eight electrons, which means it's completely filled up. So if it's not eight, then that particular element is not stable. So how many elements it needs to reach eight uh, is actually what we call an octet configuration. And consequently, we are defining valency as the number of electrons and elements need to achieve an octet configuration. In other ways, we are saying valency is the combined power of an element. So now we are saying uh, here, an element can achieve this octet configuration by either losing or gaining that particular electron, depending on whichever one it is easier. So for uh, for if, if the number of electrons is less than four, then it is easier to lose them. But if it is above four, then uh, it is not easier to lose them, but it is easier to add some more. Anyway, other details about that will be shared in some other videos. Just make sure you follow through. All right. Now, let's begin by determining the valence for elements in groups one, two, three and four. So now these groups have been paired together because the rule that governs how to find the valence in these respective groups is actually the same. What is that rule? So before we can even introduce that rule, let's just look at these groups. So these are the groups that we are talking about. Uh, this is group one right here. This is group two. This is group three. And this is group four. So you skip this one. Like I mentioned, it's known as transition metals or transition elements. Now, let's look at the rule. How do we find the valency in these uh, groups? So the rule is very simple. For groups one, two, 
three and four, the, 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 the rule is that the group number is equivalent to the valency. Now, what does this mean? So if we say, for example, this is group one, so all the elements in here, they've got a valence of one. That's what it means. So all group one elements have got a valence of one. All group two elements have got a valence of two. All group three elements have got a valence of three. And all group four elements have got a valence of what? Four. Okay, so you need to take note of this rule, determining the valence for groups one, two, three, and four, just follow the group number. So the group number is the valence of that particular element. All right. Let's look at determining valence for groups five, six, seven, and eight. So determining the group number, uh, the, the, the valence for these groups, is, it also has the same rule. Now that rule will be given in form of a formula. Before we do that, let's just have a recap. These are the groups. As you can see in Roman numerals, we have group five, group six, group seven, and group eight, which is also called group O. Be sure you know the reason why it is called group O. So the first thing is valence will be given by the formula eight minus group number. So this means if you're finding for group five, to find the valence, you are simply going to say valence for a group five element is equal to eight minus five, and it will give you three. Then for group six, it is going to be eight minus six, which will give you two. For group seven, it's going to be eight minus seven, which will give you one. And for group eight, it will be eight minus eight, which will give you zero. Now, as you can see, I said, you will know the reason why we call it group zero. So this one is called group O because or group zero because it doesn't have uh, a valence. So for these groups, you simply subtract the group number from eight. Hence, you've determined the valence. So for this one, the valence of nitrogen is three. Phosphorus is three. Astatine is three. This antimony here is three. This this math here is also three. Let's look at what we call the transition elements. So now we are saying transition elements have got no fixed valences but variable. Now, this means that the same element can have more than one valence. For example, iron can have a valence of two. In some situations, it can be three. Okay, so they are called transition elements. Now, transition is the actual, uh, the actual literal meaning, transition to change. You are moving from this thing into the other. So that is how the valence of these elements also behaves. So it changes from this value to the other value, depending on the compound in which that element is uh, being reacted or is being found. Okay, now, since these have got no uh, definite way of determining the valence, they have different valences, how then do we know the valence? So how to know that valence is very simple. Just look at, uh, just look at the, the, the way they've given you, for example, they'll ask you, find the valence of ion in ion two sulfate. So when they put this, this number they've put here, the Roman numerals they put in brackets represent the valence for the what? Uh, represents the valence for the transition metal. Okay, so here they've put two, it means that ion has got a valence of two. In this other example, as you can see, they've put three. So it means that ion has got a valence of what? Three. So that is the simple procedure which it follows. Lastly, but not the least, we are also going to look at how to determine the valence of what we call radicals. Now, a radical is simply a group of atoms which is present in several compounds, but is incapable of independence existence. So for the valence of radicals, there is no formula on how you can find them, no laid down rule. The only rule I'm going to tell you is you have to memorize these valences uh, of radicals in literature sources. By literature sources, I mean check your chemistry textbook uh, that has been recommended to you. Every recommended textbook has a table of radicals, which is going to show you the name of the radical, the, val uh, the formula of the radical, and the valence. Your duty will just be to master them. Fortunately, unfortunately, in the exam, they won't even give you these, these things, but you just have to master them, put them in your head. Start practicing. All right, example of radicals that you're going to encounter in most instances is uh, these as displayed here. So as you can see, for example, 
ammonium, which has got the formula NH4 and the valence is one. You can check all these, all these that are in here, they've got a the valence of one. Then we go to carbonate, CO3, the valence is two. So all these that are in here, they've got a valence of two. Then we've got the phosphate, which is PO4. So the valence here is what? Three. So these, you just need to memorize them. No need of, uh, no formula, no rule, but just memorize. It's that simple. Interact with them, memorize as many as you can. They're going to help you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, in the next lesson, you you will see where we are going to be applying this concept of the valence. So this is a very important concept. That's why it is part of the introduction to chemistry. If you miss this part, you miss the part to do with the periodic table, then things are going to be hard for you. So the best thing that you have to do is make sure you follow through this video, practice through, know the valences. Thereafter, we are going to see how we'll be applying valences in a lot of things. For example, in the next video that will be uploaded, we are going to learn how we can apply the valences in constructing formulas. Okay, then thereafter, we'll also look at how we can use these formulas to construct equations, and it will lead us into balancing equations. All of those are the things that makes chemistry exciting. So be on the lookout. Thank you for watching.